God loves you and appreciates you too and more than I ever could. Amen. Praise the Lord. We've got to be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. You know, as human beings, we want to depend on somebody else's strength. We want to depend on our wives strength or our husband's strength or our boss's strength. But the Bible tells us to be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. And the only way to really do that is to stay in touch with God, stay in touch with his spirit, because this world can get you diverted, can get your attention pulled away from really what's the most important thing in our lives is to be strong in the Lord. You know, we never know when a storm is going to come up and try to overtake us. We never know when we're going to wake up in the morning and receive some devastating news. We never know what we're going to face when we stand at the grocery counter and we might have somebody behind us that's full of the devil. I'm not telling you to walk around in anticipation or walk around in fear or walk around in paranoia because there are a lot of people that can't live their life because of paranoia. They're scared sometimes to even get in their car and drive because they think they're gonna have an accident. They think somebody's gonna cut them off they live in fear. But the Bible tells Christians, the ones that have asked Jesus Christ to come and live in their heart to be strong in the Lord. You won't be strong if you've got your ears peeled on the wars that are happening in this world. You won't be strong if you fill yourself up with too much media and too much, I call it, information that's useless information can make you be more fearful and get your mind on that. But the Bible says be strong in the Lord. If we're strong in the Lord, we'll be able to face anything that comes along. We'll be able to speak individually as Christians to the mountain and the mountain, the Bible says, will move. How much more if we are strong individually as Christians and when we get together and invite the spirit of God as in the opening of the church in Acts chapter two, we've got to remember the prayer meeting. See, the body of Christ has kind of gotten away from what can happen in a prayer meeting, not remembering that the body of Christ and the church of the Lord Jesus Christ was birthed in Acts chapter two in a prayer meeting. So as I've always preached, your prayers and your seeking God is going to invoke miracles. It's not that God is some sugar daddy up in the sky. Just imagine as your kids were coming up and you were a sugar daddy or sugar mama. And we know those that have raised children that will make them spoiled. Yes, we spoil our children because they are cute and lovely and beautiful and we love them. But you see, spoiling takes away appreciation. And God wants us to come to him. He wants us to seek him. He wants to do big and mighty things for us. But sometimes we put the things of the world above God. And what is that called? We've taught on it. It's called idolatry. And we can walk in idolatry 
And unless the spirit of God gets our attention, we'll continue to walk in idolatry and idolatry will take the place of God in your heart. So if we want to see the miracles of God. We've got to remember that God is an unchanging God. As he did miracles for people in the Old Testament and in the New Testament, as Jesus walked the earth, he did miracles. But in Malachi 3, 6, he said, I am the Lord. I change not. He is God. Not our newspapers, not our Internet. Not our bank account, not how big a car we drive, not how big a house we have, because those things will be the center of our affection if we don't watch it. And the closer you get to God, the less affection you will begin to have for those things. But if my eye is always on the things of this world, I'll forget about the things of God. But Jesus Christ never changes. In Hebrews 13, 8, the writer says, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today and forever, the unchanging God. And that's how we've got to be as Christians. You ever seen a fish out of water? A fish out of water flops around. It flops around all over the place. And sometimes during our Christian walk, we can flop around. But we've got to stay centered on Jesus Christ and on God. If we want to see God move, we want to see God move just by virtue of us having the name of Christian. But what does that word Christian mean? It means Christ like. And we've done many teachings on having the character of Christ in our lives. There's a lot of widespread unbelief and widespread distractions concerning miracles. But the body of Christ must remember that miracles did not end with the apostles. And when you confront someone and you say that statement to them and they turn around because there are people that believe that the miracles ended we don't argue with them, but we've got to pray collectively as a body of Christ that God will begin to move with miracles within the body. And think of how many people, just like Jesus, when he walked the earth and ministered, many came to the Lord because of the miracles that they saw. And that's what needs to happen on a corporate or group level and trickle on down into the family area because there are many families sitting in church, sitting within the body of Christ that have devastating issues going on in their families and they're desperate to see the hand of God moving, moving saving, delivering, because it's overwhelming to them. It's overwhelming to their humanity. It's overwhelming to their health, their mental health, their physical health. So it's imperative that miracles begin to move within the body of Christ. If they move back then, and Jesus gave us commandments as individual Christians to move in the miracles of God. But Jesus is alive and his power remains as real today as 2,000 years ago. And we need to rekindle 
our expectation for God's supernatural work. And sometimes the only time we'll have an expectation is when there's a problem. We need to see God move. God doesn't mind. He still hears our prayers when we come to him with our problems. But y'all have heard me say this, that sometimes God is like a raincoat to us. We only put a raincoat on when we need it or when the weather calls for that raincoat. But we need to have a strong and powerful relationship with God, at least some type of prayer life, at least some type of in touch with him through his word. And let that overpower how much media and how much other stuff we're taking in. So I hope this sermon will reignite your faith as you listen to it. So that we can believe God for modern day miracles, visible miracles. So what is a miracle in accordance with Christian beliefs? A miracle is an act of God that natural or scientific laws cannot explain. You see, I'm a believer that. Common sense nowadays is so valuable because I think that because of viral things that happen on the Internet, people hop on those viral things without even using their God given common sense. I believe that if you don't use your common sense, you're going to lose it, especially nowadays. Concerning such things as conspiracy theories, things that people believe across the board without even checking it out, without even researching and getting concrete evidence of what's going on. And, you know, if you have common sense and you operate in common sense, it activates when you hear something. So if you believe what you're reading over what's being activated inside of you, pretty soon it's not going to activate. It's just like ignoring the Holy Ghost. If the Holy Ghost convicts us of sin in our lives, but we compromise and give a reason to the Holy Ghost while we're doing it, then pretty soon the Holy Ghost is not ever going to force himself. God doesn't force himself on people. He has ways of doing things without forcing himself on people. And he primarily, I believe, works through prayers of the saints. So we must <laughs> realize that God gave us sense. God gave us a mind. We don't have to have an IQ of blah, 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 blah to be smart in life. We just need common sense. An act of God that natural or scientific laws cannot explain. Don't argue with people. Don't try to be right if you're sharing the gospel, if you're sharing spiritual things. Just back off. And pray inside, because if somebody's not open to receive, you're wasting your time. Or if you have not laid a prayer bed before you go to that person, then you're wasting your time. A miracle shows God's power and love. A miracle helps people and strengthens their faith. That's an important one. When the ways and striving of human beings run out, the miracles of God can come shining through. If only we will just speak to the mountain. How many have prayed, spoken to the mountain and then just gave up? But the Holy Spirit will revisit it, will bring it back. If you have enough prayer relationship with God, and God is using you, especially in your family, 
as an intercessor, we've got to be persistent with God. We've got to keep praying. We've got to keep going to God. We've got to keep believing God because it's his timing. We've got to stay out of our humanity and our impatience and our want him to desperately move. Yes, we want him to desperately move. But at the same time, the Bible says the trying of your faith worketh patience. God may be teaching you patience. God may be teaching you other things, but it's up to me to find that out. God, what are you teaching me? What are you showing me? Where am I going with this? And when you pray that, don't expect an answer like you do from a human being. You tell a human being something, you expect them to, to tell you right away. The Bible says, wait on the Lord and be of good courage. Wait, I say, um, the Lord. Speak to the mountain and keep believing in God. He wants to perform miracles for his people. God's nature is to perform miracles and he wants to perform them in our lives. Shown in Exodus chapter 15, verse 26, he said, I am the Lord that healeth thee. And I've seen over my course of Christianity that sometimes Christians take that and they don't use their common sense. You see, I believe that God uses doctors. I believe that God works through doctors just like he works through a construction worker or somebody in another profession. God works through humanity that's how he wants to that's how people get saved god doesn't come down out of heaven and save them he uses humanity to lead them to lead the people to show the example of jesus christ how much more could he use a doctor and sometimes people's faith may not be where they can speak to whatever mountain, especially if it's going on in my body. I may be able to pray for something in somebody else's body because I'm not feeling that pain. But if I feel that pain in my body, the faith level's got to be even that much higher. Common sense coupled with the spirit of God. Yes, we, we can't forget. We're just human beings used by God. We're not God. We don't have the power. The power comes through the hand of God. That's one thing that we cannot forget. And those that are used by God, if God uses you in a supernatural way, You've got to quickly get on the humility train because the devil will try to lift you up into a place that only belongs to God. I'm talking to ministers and ministers to me, as I read it in the word of God, are the people that are called in the Great Commission. That's every Christian. We tend to lift the fivefold ministry up above to where it shouldn't be lifted up. Because what? They're human beings just like you and I. So they could never replace God. I don't care how much we give them credit, how much we see with our eyes that the spirit of God, if it is moves through them because the Bible says there will be false signs and wonders, false prophets that operate. The Bible even speaks of they may do a miracle or a false sign that seems true, but then they will speak a false doctrine 
which shows that they are false prophets. Because the spirit and the word agree. <laughs> the spirit and the word agree. And what I was just talking about is in Deuteronomy chapter 13, verses 1 through 3. If there arise among you a prophet or a dreamer of dreams and giveth thee a sign or a wonder. Verse 2. And the sign or the wonder come to pass whereof he spake unto thee. Then here's the clincher. Here's the false doctrine. Whereof he speak unto thee, saying, let us go after other gods, which thou hast not known, and let us serve them. What did verse three say? Thou shalt not hearken unto the words of that prophet. So just because they do a sign and a wonder and it's a visible sign and wonder is not the full validation of a prophet. The full validation is when the spirit and the word agree. You see, there are many in today's church that if they see somebody do a miracle and they will count that as that prophet is moving under the spirit of God without listening to their message. Because I always teach that the power is in the pew. So a little pew setter that nobody knows their name, nobody knows their address or phone number, but that person has sat with God and they have studied the word under the spirit of God, that little pew setter will be listening and they'll be having red flags going off in their spirit. Why? Because the spirit and the word agree. All these conferences and all these healing sessions, miracle sessions, just because it has miracles written all on the, the marquee, don't go running in there with your nose open, with your spirit man wide open, unless you know the Bible. You're open to the spirit of God and some somebody gets up there and starts moving in signs and wonders and miracles and you don't know the Bible, you're sitting duck. You've been duped by deception. And the only person, <laughs> nobody's, the, the person in the deception is the only one in danger. You see, because a deceived person by virtue of the meaning of that word, doesn't know they're in deception. Lest the light of the glorious gospel, Paul said, should shine unto them. It's the gospel that opens your eyes. It's the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ that gives you eyes to see and ears to hear. Once you pray that prayer to God, God, let me hear and see what I need to see in here. You got to get in the word. Are you going to be seeing and hearing something that may be of another spirit? So God's nature is to perform miracles and he wants to perform them in our lives. In James chapter one, verse 17, every good gift and every perfect gift is from above. And cometh down from the father of lights with whom is no variableness. That means he's not going to change. He is the rock. There is no variableness. Neither shadow of turning. If he healed and performed miracles in the past, he can do it in our lives today. It's just in our individual lives and in corporate or group settings. We need to have a unity of spirit, not unity of numbers. Unity of spirit to see God move. That's how it was birthed. 
They were in unity of spirit. You're not begging God. You're just doing what his word tells us. He says, ask and you shall receive. That X is out the sugar dad and his sugar mama. Ask and you shall receive. Yes, God gives us gifts that we don't know that we need as we are seeking him. God knows what we need, but as we are seeking him, he will give us gifts that we don't know that we need. Deuteronomy 3, 24. O Lord God, thou hast begun to show thy servant thy greatness and thy mighty hand. For what God is there in heaven or in earth that can do according to thy works and according to thy might. Hear ye, hear ye, body of Christ. For what God is there in heaven or earth that can do according to thy works and according to thy might. That X's out human beings. God uses us as a conduit. If you want to be used by God, we must have a relationship with God and know our place with God. It is God that does it. It is God that uses human beings to do things. He performs it. My next point is God performs miracles through the healing of the sick and the ministry of deliverance in the name of Jesus. Now, I'm not going to go into each one of those in depth because I do believe that some people may have been turned off by some of the things that they've seen in the body of Christ and some of the glory that human beings may be accepting that belongs to God. But don't let that turn you away. That's part of it. Because Jesus and the word of God speaks of false. And I just gave an example. So that's why it's imperative that we know as individual believers know what the Bible says. We don't have to be Bible scholars. We just need to pray that the Holy Spirit will show us and guide us through the word of God. It's your sincerity. God knows when we're sincere. And when you're sincere, that opens you up for the gifts of God. Always seek Jesus with your whole heart. Yes, we are only flesh. We make mistakes. We are not perfect. Be sincere in heart. God performs miracles through the healing of the sick and the ministry of deliverance in the name of Jesus. Matthew chapter 8, verses 16 and 17. When the even was come, they brought unto him many that were possessed with devils. I'm going to stop there a minute. Many that were possessed with devils. How many listening to this have been in the four walls of your home and felt that a family member was possessed with a devil? You see, that's where the body of Christ needs to be alarmed that was a major, that is a miracle. Those of you that know the account of the Gadarene demoniac and you read that and you understand that and you digest it spiritually, you know that that was a miracle of God because no doctor could have done that unless they use the name of Jesus. They're not going to perform surgery to get it out. No scalpel or X-ray or anything is going to remedy demonic possession except the use and the authority of the name of Jesus. But there is a certain fear that's connected with that ministry. People may not talk about it, but there is a fear that's connected with that ministry. But that fear 
Like anything else, when you first rode a bicycle, you were fearful that you were going to fall and skin your knee. And if you had let that fear overtake you, you wouldn't have gotten back on that bicycle. What am I trying to say? In the ministry, even to your family, we've got to be prayerful about these things because Jesus himself said when an unclean spirit comes out of a person, it goes to the dry places seeking rest, finding none. So that shows a high accountability of how we need to be praying. Because later in that scripture says, and that spirit will come back, look and see if that person's empty and not filled with the things of God. And here's the clincher. It will come back seven times worse. How many want to see that same family member seven times worse? So that's why we teach in the deliverance ministry. We must use our binding and loosing powers. That God gave us, which activates the faith in us. If you don't do the word of God, you read all you want. But if you don't do the word of God, your faith is not going to be activated. Because you've got to speak to a mountain in order for it to be moved. But if you just read, read, read and don't pray and start doing the things, you know, see. We've got to do what we know. And we're accountable for what we know. Human beings do what they know. And you've got to do what you know spiritually. Going on with that verse. They brought unto him many that were possessed with devils. And he cast out the spirits with his word. And healed all that were sick. See, you look at that. That's included all that were sick is included with the casting out of spirits. And we know if we read the Gospels, it shows that some of the sicknesses were caused by a demon. There is a certain amount of fear and apprehension in that ministry. And I can tell you, it's work. Prayer alone is work. And Jesus said, work while there's still light and we can't let the false keep us from doing the real because as there are real people in the body of Christ, there are false people in the body of Christ. We can't let the false keep us from doing the real because we'll get, we'll compromise. We'll use that as an excuse. God already knows about the false, but he knows about my walk, too. If I'm allowing the false to compromise my walk with him, I've got my eyes on the false rather than the real. Doesn't matter. There's always going to be hypocrites. There's always going to be false prophets. I just don't want to be one of them. I want to be real. And God has made provisions. What was the provision? His death on the cross through his son, Jesus Christ, where I don't have to be false. If I don't desire to, that's what it boils down to a decision that every Christian has to make throughout their Christianity. Not that we make a decision today. I've made my decision. There's nothing going to sway me. Boom. There's that D word again deception that's deception to think that you're gonna just just because you say a prayer one time and you feel you actually feel a change in your body god may have performed a deliverance ministry on you you may have seen the grass greener the sky bluer everything around you sparkling your eyes were open but you got to quickly learn that you have an enemy. There's nothing free. I tell the young people, there's nothing free in this life. And when you think something's free, you're going to be disappointed because nothing's free. And heal all that were sick, that it might be fulfilled, 
which was spoken by Isaiah, that's Isaiah, the prophet, saying, himself took our infirmities and bear our sicknesses. Look at that. It's all because of the blood of Jesus. The freedom that comes through the cross of Jesus Christ is the only lasting freedom that any human being is going to feel while they're walking this earth in their body. God made a way for us. He made a way out of no way. God will move miraculously. He will move miraculously through repentance and prayers of his people. We may not think at any point in given time that we have anything to repent of. But if we sit with God long enough, say for a week and let him examine our hearts, we would find something. Because before that week out, we will have something to repent about. When his people humble themselves fast and seek God earnestly, God promises forgiveness, healing and restoration in Second Chronicles 714. If my people which are called by my name in modern times, his people are Christians that are called by the name Christian, which means Christ like. And that word is in the, the Bible. The Bible says in the book of Acts, they were called Christians first in Antioch. Which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. How many listening to this, even as a Christian, you felt evil and wicked. After you listen to something you just said. But you see, that's what the blood of Jesus was shed for. If we can admit it and we can go to God and repent of it, then we can stay clean with God. But if we compromise and say, hey, that person deserved it. Or we give some kind of reason and not take accountability for our own actions, then we're D word deception. So in Second Chronicles 714, we see corporate or group prayer moving the hand of God through group repentance and prayer. There is truly supernatural power in the unity of prayer. Whole revivals have been birthed just through prayer meeting of about three or four people praying together. One cause, one thing. Joel 2, 15 through 17, blow the trumpet in Zion, sanctify a fast, call a solemn assembly, gather the people, sanctify the congregation. Assemble the elders, gather the children and those that suck the breasts. Let the bridegroom go forth of his chamber and the bride out of her closet. Let the priests, the ministers of the Lord, weep between the porch and the altar. If you're not weeping for your own sins, you reap weeping for somebody else's sins. That is true in between the porch and the altar. And let them say, spare thy people, O Lord, and give not thine heritage to reproach that the heathen should rule over them. Wherefore should they say among the people, where is their God? So there needs to be a sense of urgency amongst the body of Christ, amongst the people of God to see the hand of God move in mighty miracles. God will perform miracles through his people's obedience, faith and unity of prayers. The greatest miracles are not just physical, but spiritual restoration in people's lives. To me, that's the most profound 
miracle. Salvation is a miracle. And as we saw healing deliverance, but salvation, the restoration of someone, that is a big miracle. Real, true salvation. Also to see hearts turning to God or turning back to God. Even in the darkest situation, God's mercy is there to restore when we earnestly seek him. It might be for myself or it might be for a family member or it might be if God's training me into the intercession for someone else. We're supposed to graduate in our prayer lives. God can do above and beyond everything we mentioned in this teaching. So we hope that you were encouraged in your faith. And we pray that God will move in our local body and in the body of Christ mainly to display his glory and power from the leadership all the way down to the people on the pew. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, we loose your word to our hearts and our minds. Lord, as we go into our families, oh, Father, and we see those that are in need of a touch from you, Father, we pray that we can be still and know that you are God that we can seek your face earnestly even more so Lord in those times so that our faith can remain stable and strengthened. Oh Lord, we pray that we can take out the time in our hustle and bustle in our busy lives. Oh God, to concentrate on you father and see how big a God you are. We loose the miracles of God within our families, Lord miracles that cannot be denied by those that even don't believe in God. Lord, we pray for conversions to come just because of the miracle. We pray, oh God, in the name of Jesus, that you would encourage those that are praying so hard, Lord, and feel like giving up, Lord. We pray that you would encourage them, Lord, to stay persistent in the faith, to keep on moving in it, Lord, while there's still light. We pray, O oh Father, that we will be strong enough to stand for the ones that are in our families, Lord, and the ones of, of the individual churches that we're connected to and the full body of Christ, Lord. We loose it as a whole, Father, so that the world will know that Jesus Christ is the miracle worker, that Jesus Christ is Lord, and that God is God. In the name of Jesus, we praise you, Lord. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. God is good.